What we've done is we've taken the 10 districts with the most similar cost of living and the same about similar population size as Hawaii. And if you look on the first column, so for example, if it says BA1, that's a bachelor's degree with one year, and then BA5 is a bachelor's with five years, and so on and so forth. And then the next thing you'll see bachelor's plus 30 with a master's degree and um, going all the way down. And in the last three columns, what you'll see is the average of our uh, competitive districts. You'll see Hawaii, and you will see the difference. And unfortunately, if you can see, in every single one of those categories, Hawaii trails behind our uh, similar districts, with the highest being for a bachelor's plus 60 with 20 years of experience. They are actually $30,000 lower than competitive districts. And there's a reason for this. In every single one of these districts, they compensate teachers based on years of experience. So that by 20 years, many of those um, similar districts that have reached top of the scale. We do it by steps that have to be negotiated. And the problem is we have teachers that have anywhere between 10 and 20 years almost making the exact same salary. In fact, it is very possible that a 10-year teacher is actually making more than a 20-year teacher, depending on how many education credits they get. And so what we've seen is that 10-year mark is crucial. About half of our teachers in Hawaii have 10 or less years experience, and the other half have more than that. And when we presented to this board two years ago, believe it or not, in that time, we've actually fallen behind. In that time, DC and San Francisco negotiated uh, better contracts. And what we've seen, if you look specifically at the San Francisco column, they have really made an effort. They were having the most similar cost of living to Hawaii. They were having the exact same problem of a teacher shortage, and they made a huge difference. Beginning to salaries now in San Francisco are starting at $61,000, and at the top of the scale, they can be making over $106,000. Um, LA right now, their salaries, uh, you can see, are similar to Hawaii's, and they're about to go on strike right now, just to put that into perspective. So the next slide, just to summarize, our starting teachers are about $5,400 behind our comparable districts. Our mid-career teachers are $18,000 to $30,000 behind, and our most experienced teachers at the top of the scale are $12,000 to $18,000 behind. And the next slide, okay. So the DOE is gonna be presenting you the data, but it's very clear. The number one reason why teachers are leaving Hawaii right now, is, uh, or the number one reason why teachers are separating from the DOE right now is because they're leaving Hawaii. And we've seen since 2012, 2013, that number has increased by 71%, being the number one reason why teachers are leaving right now is they are leaving Hawaii. And I can tell you that for my teachers, they know, all of us know of someone that has left recently because they've moved to the mainland in order to get a better paying position. At the end of the day, we're just not competitive and this is why we're losing our, our teachers. Uh, next slide. So, when it comes to teacher positions filled, there's a couple things I want to share with us. First of all, we still have over a thousand teacher shortage in Hawaii, and it's gone up uh, slightly. Um, but I want to clarify a couple things. The indicator is teacher positions filled by SATEP teachers. Uh, SATEP is not the same thing as a licensed teacher. It used to be that the qualification would be that there is a category called temporary temp W. And this would be teachers that have a SATEP that do not have a license in Hawaii. And that actually was the highest uh, number for emergency hires. And so now we've incorporated temp Ws into SATEPs. So it actually makes the number look better than it actually is. We still have a lot of teachers. That is not the same as a licensed teacher. And you can check with Sidney uh, um, Covell later on. I do not believe this includes charter school teachers as well. So in combining those two things, we have even more than a thousand teacher shortage. We're probably closer to something like 11 or 1200 short. Uh, SPED teachers, we have seen the numbers decrease even more. Uh, I would like to share with you the actual next slide, which is more indic uh, indicative of our SPED teacher shortage problem. Right now, we have about 2,200 positions for SPED. Again, it says on this category, filled with SATEP. SATEP does not mean that they are licensed, and it does not mean that they have uh, are SPED qualified. The next one is the more important statistic, and that is that we only have about 1,715 teachers with a SPED license, okay, compared to the SPED positions, which means that we are close to 500 positions that we are short for special education. 
this is a time bomb waiting for a lawsuit to occur because we know that we cannot provide services to our students if, unless we have enough special education teachers. And we know from what we've seen, and you guys have seen in the reports to you folks as well, that this shortage is not equal across the state. That some areas that they have even a higher shortage crisis and some of our students go year after year without getting the, uh, the services that they need under SPED. So, what are the solutions? And I wanted to share with you with this. It was interesting, we look back at the solution, because we, we asked this question, has Hawaii always had a shortage? And the answer is no, we haven't. Actually, in the 70s and 80s, we actually had a surplus of teachers. And in the, the early 1970s, there was a period of time where there was consecutive high increases to the teacher contract. And these are just some of the clippings from articles from back then. Um, but wouldn't this be nice? It said local college graduates choose to stay home and employ teachers decide to hang on to their posts. And that's from the Honolulu Star Bulletin, July 12, 1970. DOE has more than 1,000 teachers on the waiting list for elementary school positions alone. Most of the teachers that were on the, the short list were Hawaii residents instead of having to go to the mainland to trying to recruit. And the reason why is that Hawaii's salaries were comparable to upper level salaries with mainland school systems, and that's 1972. And then you guys struck in 1972 to 73. That's right. And if you look at the contracts right in that time, mm -hmm. year after year, they were getting high salary compensation during those years. And so at one point, I love this statistic because this is so foreign to what we have now. The College of Education in Hawaii had to turn down uh, people that wanted to go into the College of Education. They had so many teachers applying to that. Uh, they actually had to turn them down. And there was 2,700 unemployed teachers in the state of Hawaii. Um, Ariyoshi, Governor Ariyoshi at the time, actually was trying to encourage teachers to retire. And so what was the result for our students? If you look at it, right about the 70s and right towards the end, of st a student that started in 1972, was graduated in 1984, and Hawaii teachers were the fifth highest paid educators in the entire nation. And this is from the Honolulu Star Bulletin in December 19th, 1984. Hawaii was fourth in the nation, fourth in the nation in graduation rates. At one point, we were one of the best school systems in the entire country. When it came to SAT scores, we were 16th in the nation and we were growing at that. So this is not something that is impossible to fix, but it cannot be fixed with short gap measures. It cannot be filled with gimmicks. I know that the board in the presentation is looking at things such as, you know, troops to teachers and foreign teachers coming in. The problem is the research has shown for both of those is the retention rates are really low. An international teacher can only stay for three years. And because the shortage often in time places like our Leeward Coast, that means that those teachers will have this constant turnover again. There are no shortcuts to fixing education. And so this is something that I think that the Department of Education, the Board of Education, HSTA, we've got to work together on this. I, don't, I really hope that I don't have to come back next year with the same statistics and see it getting worse. And so I really hope that this year we will be putting up legislation to try to fund education. And I hope that all of us can go to the legislature and say, look, we've got to fund our schools better. We've got to pay our teachers better. There are no shortcuts. And that this is something that will finally be fixed. And so, I do hope that we will get support from this board and the department in trying to get this funding for our schools passed. Thank you. Any questions?